won the debate tonight. The final countdown before Sabrimala opens its doors to women of all ages for the first time. But even as the clock ticks down to the final countdown, protests intensify. Women devotees, uh, senior women, they were blocking the buses, blocking cars, private cars carrying people. And if there were uh, women who are fertile women who were found in there, this is what they call. They are branding them as fertile women. And if they find any fertile women inside the uh, vehicle, they were deliberately pulled out or asked to leave or to stand there until the vehicle goes. And the men go to the Sabrimala and come back. Ayappa devotees who are opposing the Supreme Court verdict are on an overdrive. Screening buses and cars bound for Sabrimala to check for women passengers. So we are going to fight it out. We don't know whether we will win or lose, but we will stand for right, truth, justice, and fight. Please respect our sentiments. Give us five more days, and we are going to guard the temple for 125 hours. Is our well-studied position. Even Mirror Now's reporter was not spared. The protests in Kerala have also taken a political turn as Shiv Sena and the BJP give the protests a Hindu twist. Devotees in large number, large scale, they are cooperating with the BJP. BJP is support, supporting their genuine cause of protecting their faith. We will fight up to the last for att uh, attaining the objective. Now as the Kerala government faces the ultimate test, they are sure that they will ensure the Supreme Court's verdict is implemented. In the not Meanwhile, as protests in Kerala show no signs of dying out, Mira now asks, will protesters be allowed to lay siege to the temple? Can the Kerala government ensure that the Supreme Court verdict is implemented? Will women enter Sabrimala tomorrow? Let's debate. Well, Kerala is on tender hooks there and things are getting fairly nervous. But uh, our journalist Kajal Ayer joins me right now. She's live near Nilakal. Uh, Kajal, if you'll remember, uh, in the package that we just played out for you, Kajal's car was stopped this afternoon and she was asked to return or go back and she couldn't proceed any further simply because she was a woman. Also, Pramod Madhav, our journalist, joins us as well. Kajal, you first. Uh, as a journalist, there are very few uh, you know, moments now, at least in modern India, where we are prevented from doing our jobs because we're women. But what was that experience like? What actually happened? Did you know who these people were? Do you believe that they're actually devotees or is, it, is this now a political protest, Kajal? Well, there does seem to be some amount of politics in this entire issue because uh, yesterday we passed through the same places. We did go to Pamba and initially uh, while they did try to stop us, uh, some people did escort us eventually to Pamba today. So we did go uh, to Pamba today uh, but uh, even there we were asked, uh, we were requested not to stay there for long because the people who were waiting at Nilakkal were very anxious and could take law into their own hands if they got to know uh, that other people had escorted us up to Pamba. So that was was something so we uh, and eventually because uh, at Nilakkal the situation started becoming very chaotic we did return there and I was reporting from there for the rest of the time uh, but uh, 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 videos were uh, uh, videos uh, of uh, local channels uh, where we are seeing speaking to these people who are not uh, trying to, uh, not letting us go to the place where women are allowed even before the Supreme Court verdict women were allowed till Pamba but they did not want us to go even there today and they did not let any vehicle with any women to go to Pamba, despite the fact that it has always been allowed to go to Pamba. So that uh, there seems to be a lot of uh, 
afraid sentiments there uh, everything was very chaotic and uh, the police did not really uh, stop these people from inspecting vehicles and asking women to get down that seems to be a failure while the chief minister has been making statements that he is in support of women going there that he will uh, ensure uh, that women get security on the ground there is absolutely no such security well, uh, my colleague Pramod also joins us live. Pramod, where are you right now and what have you noticed on the roads uh, in Kerala today? Uh, what is the What sort of bandubast has the state government arranged for? Have they asked for forces, backup forces from the centre or will the state government handle this on their own? Well, we are at a place called Patanam Tita. This is close to uh, Avdhya Sabrimala and this is how it goes. We have the Pandalam royal family, then you have Patanam Tita. From these directions, the Tir Tirubabaram, that is the actual ornaments for Ayyappan, is at the royal family's house. Then you have to go to Patanam Tita. You have a mosque over there called Vavar Mosque. And from there, you have to go to Nilakal. From Nilakal to Pamba. The Nilakal to Pamba is 25 kilometers. And from Pamba, people have to walk 5 kilometers through a forest to reach Sabrimala. This is the normal procedure. But today, what happened is that, as, as Kajal rightly mentioned, in Nilakal, it was very chaotic because any car or bus that came over there, the women, the senior, uh, uh, the senior women, they were the ones who stopped the vehicle. The men were just uh, standing quietly. They did not intervene. And the cops, I could say that around 11.20 when we went there, there should be only 20 cops. One and a half an hour later, there were another 20 cops. And at the time, like later, we just saw it could be a maximum of 120 cops in that area right now. They were trying to, uh, like uh, around 3 p.m., there were close to 300 to 400 protesters alone in that area. They were blocking the buses. They were like inspecting the cars. They actually entered the bus stating that if there is any woman, get down immediately. You will not be allowed to Pamba. And not a single cop said it did anything about it. Higher officials were present in the situation, but they did not react. That is the biggest question as to why they did not react. It definitely has turned political right now. There are three main players in this situation. One is the devotees, which also includes the Ayyappa Seva Sang, the Pandalam royal family and the Tantris. The second one is the uh, political, uh, a political background activist. And the third one is the pilgrims. The pilgrims seem to be the one that are in real trouble right now. Because as we speak about this speculation, when we went to from Patam Titta to uh, this uh, Shabri Malas uh, Nilakal, there were at least a minimum of six landslides. The road has to be cleared. Even in Pamba, the particular location where the people have right, to stay, right, those things have not constructed been after properly after this uh, rainfall which you saw last month. These things have been not taken care of. Before that, this has also occurred. We did not see any police stop anybody there today. Uh, in fact, I have a quick question for Kajal if she's still with us. Kajal, here's my question. Uh, who do you believe will be will be visiting the temple tomorrow. Will there be any women? We know of this one case where a woman wants to visit, but she's now begun her 41-day penance. So that's not going to happen right now. Uh, who's going to actually visit the temple tomorrow? How many women do you think will attempt to enter? Well, it doesn't seem clear as if uh, uh, as to whether any women will actually be going because uh, I spoke to Trupti Desai and she's also saying that uh, uh, she wants to go uh, during the time when the temple is open for an entire month and um, uh, the other ladies who were there in Kerala, they want to follow the tradition of the 41-day fast uh, before uh, they enter the temple. Perhaps uh, as a way to uh, mollify these people who have been saying that they have no right uh, to go to the temple. So, uh, we do not really know if there are going to be any uh, women who will actually attempt that there were some rumors, some speculation that there are going to be a certain uh, female cadre of certain political parties who may try to enter there. Uh, but uh, that also, so far, we have not seen anything of that sort uh, uh, happening on the ground. Uh, so it is. it seems very unlikely that too many women will try to attempt. And after what happened today was broadcast widely in the local channels, uh, there could be a possibility that the police themselves might advise any of these women to not go because clearly they are not able to provide security if women even reach Nilakal. So, uh, Kajalaya and Pramod, they're saying that the police in Kerala were not able to do enough today given what was going on on the streets. Uh, Kajal and Pramod, many thanks for giving us this update live at 9pm on Mirror Now. Uh, we will come back to you right through the day tomorrow for updates uh, while the temple opens. But joining me on the show at this point, Tripti Desai, uh, who is one of the activists who's, who's fought for this from the beginning. She's the founder of Bahamata Brigade. 
Prashant Unikrishnan is an IAPA Dharma Sena member. Uh, Padma Pillai is the spokesperson of Ready to Wait. Now, by Ready to Wait, they mean they are willing to wait until they turn 50 to enter the temple. MB Rajesh, member of parliament with the CPIM. Mr. Kailash Vasudev, senior advocate with the Supreme Court. And Sadhvi Jaya Bharti is a scholar at DJJS. Uh, I welcome all of you to this conversation and I thank you for your time. Uh, my first question is to Tripti Desai. Tripti, uh, we understand that you will not be visiting the temple tomorrow, but what is your reaction to the protests that we see on the ground right now in Kerala? Hello. Tripti, can you hear me? Hello. Tripti, uh, आप हमारी चैनल पे अभी यस आप हमारी चैनल पे अभी ये प्रोटेस्ट और जो आज के जो प्रोटेस्ट थे जहां पे बस और कार को रोक के सारे औरतों को वहां से रास्ते पे उतार के बोला गया कि आप यहीं पे रुक सकते हैं आगे नहीं जा सकते आपको आपके ये क्या रिएक्शन है ये देख के नहीं एक तो कल से जो है वो मंदिर खुला होने वाला है सुप्रीम कोर्ट का वर्ड इक्ट आने के बाद उसका इम्प्लीमेंटेशन वहां की सरकार कर रही है और आज जब प्रेस के लोग जा रहे थे या कोई भी भक्त जा रहा है तो उनको तो पंबा तक भी जाने नहीं दे रहा है तो ये जो प्रोटेस्ट है वो पूरी तरह वायलेंस फैलाने की जो है वो ये शुरुआत है क्योंकि ये धमकी दे रहे हैं कि अगर आप आएंगे तो हम आपकी गाड़ी रुकाएंगे वहां के जो वो एक्टर है कोल्लम तुलसी वो कहते हैं कि महिलाएं जब आएगी तो हम हम उनके टुकड़े कर देंगे शिवसेना कहती है कि महिलाएं जब आएगी तब उनको जो है वो आ, वहां पे हम सुसाइड करेंगे तो ये जहां पे रोकते हैं मुझे लगता है केरला सरकार जो प्रोटेक्शन दे रही वो क्या कर रही है जब मैं वीडियो देख रही थी तब वहां की जो पुलिस थी पुलिस तो सिर्फ देखने की जो है वो भूमिका निभा रही थी वहां पे कुछ भी नहीं कर रही थी ये कंटेम्प्ट ऑफ कोर्ट है ऐसे किसी को नहीं रोका जा सकता है जो प्रोटेस्टर है उनको भी जो है वो पुलिस ने जो है वो हिरासत में लेना चाहिए और कल जब कोई ग्रुप अगर महिलाओं का वहां पे आएगा वहां पे टेम्पल एंट्री करने के लिए तो वहां की केरला सरकार हो या पुलिस हो अगर कोई भी रोकने वहां पे अगर प्रोटेस्टर्स आते हैं या कुछ गलत करते हैं तो महिलाओं को प्रोटेक्शन देकर उनको सुरक्षित से जो है वो अंदर तक मंदिर तक लेके जाना ये उनकी जिम्मेदारी है और ये वायलेंस जो चल रहा है वहां पे जो है वो पॉलिटिकली डर्टी पॉलिटिक्स भी चल रहा है जिसमें बहुत सारी पार्टियां आगे आ रही है उसमें नेशनल पार्टी कांग्रेस हो बीजेपी आ रही है तो ये बिल्कुल गलत है महिलाओं का कल वहां पे स्वागत होना चाहिए और जिनको प्रोटेस्ट करना है जिनको विरोध करना है उन्होंने गांधीगिरी मार्ग से विरोध करना चाहिए uh, we'll have Prashant Unikrishnan join us in a, in a little while. Um, in the meantime, for uh, pa Padma Pillai, Padma Pillai, here's my question to you. Do you agree with the kind of protests that we're seeing happen today? Uh, is this fair and is this constitutional? Um, if you ask me if this is constitutional, the right to protest is definitely constitutional. But people uh, being violent with somebody else, um, that I cannot condone. I have not seen the visuals per se and I have not seen what is exactly happening there. But, uh, you know, the protests are definitely constitutional because... Okay, so let me tell you, let me tell you, Padma ji, I'm very the surprised. Here, Padma so Pillai, one understand. second. Let me you tell know, you. Have been, I'm uh, first of all, one second, one second, the, uh, Padma... Legal luminaries itself. One like second. Like the Attorney General, like uh, retired Chief Justices Mark and Karju, etc. That this judgment can indeed be reviewed. And when the CJI has said that on 22nd, he will take a decision whether to review it, whether to refer it or whether to what, do whatever. And the entire legal circle is also uh, saying that it can, there is scope for review in this. Then why the hurry to implement this by the Kerala government? So this is creating a lot of confusion in the minds of devotees. Okay. Padma, can you hear me? an option going to open on 22nd, why does the government say that they, they are going to be in such a tearing hurry? And as if, and we hear news every day in various portals and others saying that a group of women from a certain party are being prepared to barge in and all those things. So uh, the judgment came on the 28th. So nobody has completed 41 days uh, penance. No, non, none of these women who are so-called... Uh, Going to enter Shabarimana have also not completed the 41 days. Padma, can you hear me? So what is the 
All right, so obviously Padma either cannot hear me or is not interested in what I have to say. I'm very surprised that Padma turns around today and she says she does not know what is going on and she hasn't seen uh, the kind of protest. No part of this protest is constitutional, Padma. The protesters have stopped buses on the road. I'm They've gone into... I have not seen... Okay, obviously you cannot hear me, which is why you keep like interrupting me. All because right. I have not seen that. Okay, why very good. I so let me then listen the to me. I will tell you. I, I, I will listen to you. you know, Padma, Padma. Padma, Padma, let me tell you, since you've not bothered at all and you have not, you don't know what is going on before coming onto a national television panel on the matter, let me tell you what is going on. These so called constitutional protests that you say, these are people who have gotten onto buses, they have screened the buses for women, for what they call fertile women. They have made those women get down onto the street and stand on the street and sent the bus forward. They have stopped cars. They have checked cars for fertile women. They have made those cars turn around and go back, including our reporter. Footage that we have and the footage shows clear intimidation of her and her driver where they were told that they have to turn around immediately. There is nothing constitutional about this protest. The protest that says that we will commit mass suicide if a woman enters. The protest that says that we will tear you in half and send one half to Delhi and one half to the chief minister. There is nothing constitutional about these protests. These protests people are simply intimidatory. Can I answer to the part about people being driven away from cars? Really, you have an answer? I thought you didn't know what was going on. No, you are telling me right now, right? right? You are telling me now and I can see the visuals on my screen now. Okay, you can see the visuals. So can I respond? Go ahead. What is your response? Yeah. So the response is that if somebody is stopping somebody, opening their car or getting into a bus and asking people to get down, it's definitely unconstitutional. It's definitely something that the, uh, the, the government can intervene. And there are police people who are standing there. So uh, why is it my responsibility as ready to wait to have, seek an answer to what people, everybody who is uh, out on the roads, uh, 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 what, what they are doing? It's not my, uh, my Nobody job Nobody said to it do was that. your responsibility. I, I asked you if you believed it was constitutional. And, uh, uh, we all have been participating in peaceful protests where people pray on the roads. So tomorrow from Nilakkal, I always uh, will support the mothers and brothers and sisters who are going to sit there. They are going to do a sit-in. They are going to do a dharna. Okay. I cannot answer for the people who will say that, you know, we are going to open cars and drive people away and all that. I am well, sure the people who are trying to go should then uh, seek uh, police protection or something like that. But the fact is that the, the right to peacefully sit there is, a, is something that is constitutional. Kailash Vasudev, um, Padma Pillai also said that since the matter can be reviewed, why is the hurry to why is there a hurry to implement it? Now, if the Supreme Court has given us a judgment, that judgment becomes active from the day it was pronounced. So there's no hurry; it's already implemented. Is that not true, Mr. Vasudev? Correct. That is correct. See, moment a judgment is pronounced, especially by the Supreme Court it becomes implementable until unless the court says defer the implementation, which seldom happens. But here is an interesting debate which has come up and I'm digressing from the topic which is being raised as to why people are stopping people from coming in and prohibiting women from coming in. Eventually, what has the Supreme Court done? Set aside the judgment of 1991 of the Kerala High Court, which supported the views of the Devasthanam that ladies at a particular age in a particular state should not be allowed to go and worship. So the judiciary has set aside a judicial decision, keeping in view the conspectus of the constitution where a secular system must prevail. In doing so, it may have, it may have gone a bit into the area of gender justice, which is now becoming rampantly necessary. You look at the Supreme Court's approach, triple talaq, entry into Sabarimala, protection of women, the Visaka judgment, the suggestions with regard to protection of women at all places, the constitutional duty of right and obligations on the part of government to give women equal rights. Keep this in the background. Why should Sabri Mala be an exception? If Sabri Mala is to be an exception, then you will have a situation where everybody in all religious fields will bring about a gender, just, a gender, gender injustice impacting the secular system which we are seeking to propose and follow. I am unable to understand for myself as to why should a lady be prohibited from entering a temple, 
especially in the modern days where things have opened up societal norms have changed and where situations are bringing about a massive a massive transition from the traditional traditional does not mean bad but modernization means a change we have to accept change and grow along with it this business of polarization on the ground is not in good taste supreme court has held so order it follow it bring about a change improve our systems give everybody a chance don't act parochial that's my view mb rajesh member of parliament cpim joins <laughs> us out of bangalore mb rajesh will the state of kerala be able to provide a uh, complete protection to the women who want to enter the temple tomorrow of course today the chief minister uh, himself had Uh, uh stated that the government of kerala will ensure safety uh of women who wanted to visit sabarimala for worship hmm. the government has taken note of uh, some incidents which took place today uh including uh, preventing buses and vehicles and screening uh, of uh, women passengers by uh, certain vigilante groups the government has made it categorically clear that no vigilante groups will be allowed to prevent uh, vehicle and screen passengers and uh, they would uh, will not be allowed to prevent uh, women who wanted to worship in sabrimala well tell me something uh, mb rajesh if you are so confidently telling us today if you're going to tell us that the government will be able to provide complete protection what happened today both of our journalists on the ground kajal and pramod gave us a report that the police was just standing around and they did not intervene when these protesters stopped the cars and buses when they made the women get down and stand on the side of the street while their bus went forward the police did nothing so what faith should these women have in the government that they'll be able to stop this tomorrow that's what i said hmm. Uh, chief minister himself has taken note of uh, uh, such incidents which took place today and the chief minister has issued a public statement and the chief minister i'm sure uh, uh, would have given uh, chief minister might have given uh, directions to the police officers senior police officers uh, regarding the, the steps to be taken to ensure safety of uh, women devotees who wanted to uh, visit sabarimala tomorrow that's why i am confidently uh, saying i am reassuring uh, uh, the women devotees who wanted to visit sabarimala because chief minister has issued a public statement secondly secondly regarding the protest the entire protest is uh, political on, uh, alone mm. and uh, these people i would like to add <laughs> i would like to add two more uh, verdicts uh, on the part of honorable supreme court uh the one is in shiknapur temple in maharashtra and another one is haji ali darga both are in maharashtra and the maharashtra government led by bjp uh, chief minister uh, mahendra singh fatnavis that uh, government bibindra fatnavis uh, had taken steps to implement the mumbai high court verdict i'm i'm, I'm sorry it was not supreme court verdict it was mumbai high court's verdict the government of kerala is also uh, taking steps to implement supreme court of india's constitutional bench's uh, uh, verdict and the government is not in mm. a hurry but the government is only uh, uh, doing its duty of implementing uh, the verdict uh, delivered by the constitutional okay. bench of supreme court of india the okay. government is duty bound to do that that is what prashant uni krishnan is he is wrong one second prashant uni krishnan has joined us now of the ifr dharma sena prashant uni krishnan what is the plan of the ayappa dharma sena for tomorrow swami sharanam uh, the ayappa dharma sena as i have already said we are into non violence move we are not mm. into an offensive kind of an mode we are clearly onto a non violence mode we if you if you can see the kind of attacking proposals has who has been doing is not from the ayappa dharma sena you can see the people who are doing it ayappa dharma sena basically are not a political party or a political supportive group of people the ayappa dharma sena is basically we are the devotees of ayappa we doesn't have a political support we are basically people who are there at sabrimala and from nilakel who will be lying down and who will be peacefully having our platforms lying down where, where? we will be having our prayers and we will be telling the amma the lying down where mr prashant i get you i'm sorry You said you will be lying down. Where will you be lying down? On the road or at the side? We will of the be have. 
we will be no no we'll be lying we'll be lying down at, at pampa area and pampa area to till the sannidana area we'll be lying down at those areas we will not be opposing we will not be blocking any buses or we will not be blocking any areas. the ayappa dharma sena will be there as as our main leaders like myself rahul ishwar and others left from the pandalam palace we will not be doing any offensive kind of activities at shabrimala area the people who are doing offensive things may be uh, some politicians or some mr interest people you can see there are intruders who are coming from the marxist party also you can find it in the coming days who are from the marxist party people they are trying to be the intruders trying to have the western interest like mr mp rajesh has just commented there are intruders which are maybe the marxist party people who are trying to make western interests Okay, so Prashant Uni Krishnan, you will be, according to what you have just said, Did you will clear? be protesting on this uh, on the footpath, on the side of the road. You will not block anybody's route. You will be not. You wouldn't be lying on the road or creating a human shield to block anybody's route to the temple tomorrow. We will not be on. We will. We will be at the. Uh, we will be at the Pampa. Pampa. We will be at Pampa on the places on the sun until the Sanidhanam places. We will be on the. main roads not on the roads we will not be checking the buses or anything like that what you can see is those are the people the tribal people who are checking the buses and they are checking the things they are not uh, they are not uh, ayappa dharma sena people they are different people the politicians bjp is not our supporting people ayappa dharma sena has never asked any politicians to come and support us there are a lot of other political parties who are doing the support of uh, Uh, there are a lot of people who are there, but they are not Ayappa Dharma Sena people. Ayappa Dharma Sena are totally different people. Okay, all right. There are Sadhvi, a lot of political parties who are supporting this. We have one last voice on the this, panel. This, Sadhvi Jaya uh, Bharti is with us as well. They are not Ayappa yes, Dharma Sena yes, people. Yes, yes. Sadhvi Jaya Bharti joins us as well. Uh, Sadhvi Jaya Bharti, do you believe that women who want to enter the temple tomorrow, as per Supreme Court ruling, should be allowed to go in with police protection? um see it's a very sensitive situation that has been created there is a conflict now between the article 14 and article 25 and even if we look at the review petitions being filed the judgment is not the final judgment till we get the opinion of the uh, supreme court on the review petition so lying on the bench so one thing is that you know uh, i think something uh, the government should have moved that until and unless the supreme court takes a call on the review petitions the government could have put this thing the implementation on the whole that's what the government should do in such a sensitive situation now we have when we say that okay uh, there is a judgment and that should be implemented the first thing as a uh, you know hindu devotee i feel uh, that we uh, by the judgments you know of courts we, you know people don't do away with their sentiments and look at the number of people that they are you know they are opposing this judgment and they are you know opposing this you know entry of the women of certain age into the temple uh, look at their sentiments being you know uh, offended and they obviously as far as they uh, you know oppose it as far as they protest peacefully that is very constitutional and there was some gentleman speaking a while before and he did made a point that why is a sabrimala temple uh, you know singled out and i would like to even put a question to those who are saying that they are devotees and they are faithful of the sabrimala temple have they gone to the rest and visited the three temples of lord ayappa mm -hmm. where the permission is free and it is there even in the ayappa temple uh, there are no blanket ban on making it as a gender issue women do and it is only for a penance of 41 days that ha that makes this issue a sensitive issue that you know uh, the only a certain age is not permitted so you know taking everything down the line of a feminist lens and a gender justice lens and ignoring all the rest of the factors would create such situations in the country which is uncalled for okay all right uh but well, you know my response to that is basically these arguments should have already been made before the supreme court and the supreme court has given us its judgment but i'll take your questions with the points that you've raised to mr kailash bastev mr bastev a couple of points no matter uh, can i come yeah, one second but one there second there are scope of review and which yes, the people yes. of faithful and believers have done yes okay mr bastev the question that was raised first of all that is this the final judgment because the review petition has not been looked at by the of the bench yet secondly uh, could the state government have taken a call not to implement the judgment of the supreme court and to wait a little longer is that even possible mr vasudev 
The filing of a review petition does not mean that the judgment which is sought to be reviewed is stayed. A judgment stays in force till it is reversed. Here is a review petition which will come up in due course of time. I believe it was mentioned before the outgoing Chief Justice who said it will be, be listed in due course. So far there is no stay and as long as the judgment in Sabrimala's case by a majority of four to a minority of one holds good, it is to be implemented. There is no two opinions on that. The second aspect of it, whether the state government should proceed to implement the judgment or no, yes, it has to proceed because the judgment of the Supreme Court becomes the law of the land under Article 141. If it is the law of the land, please implement it. If you want it to be stayed, let approach the court for a stay and obtain it. Till there is no stay, the law has to be followed and the state is obliged to implement it. It is called the execution of a decree of the court. The state has no choice there is in this no matter. There is no bar but, on the state you know, government but, in implementing a judgment which holds good. But I just want to point out, this also puts the state government in a terribly no, politically untenable situation. Because like Mr. Vasudev said, the state government has no choice. It cannot choose not to implement the Supreme Court order. It has to implement the Supreme Court order. But on the other hand, if it no, does... No, it can. It, can. Mm. it has. Yes, the state government has. Go ahead. DC, there's an can I come in please? Yes, go ahead. The Kerala government in the, in the recent history and the past history of the Kerala government have shown umpteen number of examples where the judicial decrees have not been uh, uh, implemented on and the courts have repeatedly, there have been years which have passed, there is a, uh, there is a decree about, uh, there, is a, there, is a, uh, there is a judgment about one temple, one church in, uh, in, uh, in Kerala where the judgment has still not been implemented and they have gone again and requested the court for the, to, request, uh, to ask the, the government to act. So the Kerala government is legendary about not implementing Supreme Court verdicts and only this verdict since it suits their narrative, they are rushing past it as if you know all hell is going to break loose if we, they, they don't do it before 22nd. So this government doing this when there are so I, many I instances of I would like, the government I would, ignoring I would like to when add it to comes that. to appointment like of a DGP. To. When there was an appointment of a DGP, reappointment of a DGP, the government hung his head and the, the chief secretary or somebody was reprimanded by court. But they do take the opportunity to do such things when it suits them. So that is what the common Sorry. public is now irked about, is that the government plays these kind of rules when suddenly the Supreme Court becomes, you know, suddenly the Supreme Court orders become like, uh, you know, un, uh, immediately implementable and all that. And in, when it doesn't suit so, them, so, they will on. stand so on the street. Pille. There have been leaders of the party. One second. Start, when, you on say, the when you say you don't want... that we want, should revolt okay. against the court from that own party. All right, Padma Pillai, when you say you don't want the, the state government Sorry. to implement the Supreme Court order, what you're saying effectively is that the state government shouldn't give police protection to the women who go to Sabrimala tomorrow. No, I am only saying, I am only saying that this government should not have stopped the Devaswam from filing a review. The government, I, the can government say did not that stop anybody from filing a review. Time to implement. It can request the court to say, why did it not do that? Okay, uh, MB Rajesh with the, the CPIM, go ahead. Why, okay, one second. Padma, if you ask questions, we wait, we wait, wait for that? the answer. Wait for the answer. All right. Uh, M. B. Rajesh is with the is a member of parliament with the CPIM. Uh, did the government of Kerala stop the Devaswam board from filing a review petition? Firstly, and secondly, uh, did you consider saying that listen, we need more time in order to be able to implement this? See, uh, first of all, uh, the state government has not uh, directed the uh, Devaswam board uh, not to file. Uh, a review petition. The, the Devasum board uh, is an autonomous uh, body and it is not uh, taking any directions from the government of Kerala. And the, uh, it is the decision of the uh, Devasum board whether to file or not to file a review petition. Secondly, regarding the implementation of Supreme Court judgments, uh, well, I have already mentioned here decision. that uh, there was a High Court judgment. Uh, the, there was a judgment by the High Court of uh, Mahar, uh, Mumbai, Mumbai High Court, uh, regarding the Shiknapur Temple and ha uh, Haji Ali Darga. Both these judgments were uh, implemented by BJP government in Maharashtra. Why? The governments are the, uh, re the respective governments are duty why, why bound did to you, why implement did you change prior uh, judgments uh, delivered by High Court and Supreme Court. 
in 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 this case also the government of kerala had no other choice but to implement the uh, judgment delivered by the constitutional bench of supreme court of india in anybody who uh, has a a uh, basic understanding of the law knows that as the uh, esteemed lawyer uh, in our panel uh, clearly stated under article 141 the supreme court judgment is the law of the land how the government can violate a judgment uh, how the government can take a position that we won't implement a judgment delivered by the supreme court number 3 uh, some uh, uh, panelists in our panel they uh, initially started uh, uh, with saying that Uh, they are a political group but uh, when they spoke the cat is out of the bag they uh, ma clearly made political allegations and that itself clearly shows that their political motives the protest against this judgment is uh, political and it Madam, has a larger I... political agenda all right prashant uni christian go ahead please madam can i can i can i interrupt can i interrupt can i interrupt can i ask one second one second one at a time one at a time you change the yeah, i'll ask i'll ask three particular Padma, questions to abhi rajesh one, one second pad prashant uni krishan go ahead can i can i can i ask three questions to mb rajesh here political questions to mb rajesh here in piravam case in piravam case it has gone to supreme court why did the kerala government ask for extra time for piravam case point number 1 Why did it took three months time to interrogate the bishop, Bishop Franco? Why did it take three months to take interrogate Bishop Franco? Why did the Kerala government took the, the dual aspect there? Please answer, MP Rajesh. Mr. Rajesh, why did those things happen from the Kerala government? Why did so so urgency happen for the Kerala? Yeah, Sabrina definitely case? I will answer. Definitely Please I will answer. answer. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm an happy. You should answer I'm this. I'm happy that Mr. Prashant Undikrishnan, who pretended to be no, a political party, no, you should answer it right now. Uh, uh, you were so urgent. The Kerala government. No, no, one at a time. Please don't speak at the same time. Now, why are you giving time? Prashant, you asked your question. Please listen to the answer. MP Rajesh, go ahead, please. No, he has asked. He has asked this question. So let me answer. See, see, I'm, I'm happy that Mr. Prasad Unnikrishnan, who initially pretended as an apolitical uh, uh, party, just to this give debate, the answer, now Mr. Rajesh. Expose himself. That is good. Uh, and his questions, he, he, he asked about uh, that some uh, Peravam case and this Bishop case. See, there is no comparison between these things and the judgment delivered by the Constitutional Bench of the Supreme Court, and that judgment clearly states that the Supreme Court allows entry of. Uh, women in sabrimala because the uh, the particular rule which banned the entry is unconstitutional and uh, it it uh, uh, yes. denies the constitutional right for gender justice so that is the issue this is uh, the constitution is supreme and the supreme court has delivered its judgment on the basis of a constitutional right how the government can Uh, prevent the implementation of that judgment how the government can uh, promulgate an ordinance which involves constitutional uh, dimensions well you know i want to ask this question of mr kailash vasudev mr vasudev uh, the protesters here prashant uni krishnan and for the one second you asked your question mr uh, prashant uni krishnan and padma pillai have raised two things one should the kerala government have asked the supreme court for more time now we've seen this happen in a couple of cases for example in the kaveri water case where the karnataka and the uh, tamil nadu governments kept asking for more time but that was not a constitutional bench secondly uh, should the kerala government have dragged their feet have as they have done in other cases in the past what's your response to both of these suggestions in the first instance <clears throat> the judgment of the supreme court is implementable immediately the kerala government in its own wisdom has decided to implement the judgment you can't stop a government from implementing a judgment the difference between the water distribution cases that is the interstate river disputes on the distribution of water and this case is very 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 distinct and very clear the applications were made in that case to apportion water because madras wanted sorry Ch mm. tamil nadu wanted more water and the government of kerala was saying we don't the karnataka was saying we don't have that kind of supply so there was an adjudicatory position here there is no adjudicatory position the adjudication has taken place the constitution bench of the supreme court has taken a decision in accordance with the principles of law as applicable and as discerned by the court it is not open to anyone not to implement the decision 
it is not open to anyone to say because the review is pending we will not implement the decision the decision has to be implemented the government of kerala wants to enforce it it will choose to do so so there's a massive <laughs> difference where there is an adjudicatory process pending and there is no adjudicatory way. process pending now there is no adjudicatory pr hmm. process pending right now it will come up if the supreme court entertains the review in its discretion maybe there will be a process but most cases the supreme court does not take in reviews after it has pronounced judgment i think the total number of reviews the supreme court has done it, in it since 1950 is less than 1% less than 1% I also so, want to point. Yes, yes. Go ahead, the, Mr. Vesti. The chances of a review being entertained. So, therefore, the chances of a review being entertained, we always, as practicing in the Supreme Court, say, are very slim. Chances yes, of, of, of a review. Slim. Yes. Uh, the one last no, point no. I want to raise. I, I, one one second. One second. One second. Padmaji, please yes. wait. One last point I want to raise is this. Now we've had uh, our reporters have actually shot bites with people. who claim to be from the bjp and who claim that this entire pro protest is actually support for the bjp inside of kerala now while people like padma pillai and people like prashant uni krishnan have both said that their organizations will protest patiently and democratically and peacefully tomorrow where is the where is the the stronger protest coming from the stopping of the cars making women get off from buses who are these people are these politically affiliated people are they also different uh, you know groups of people who are protesting has the protest become political because madam let, let yes. me let me let me answer that let yes, me yes prashant let me let me, let me let me answer that let me answer that the person who is sitting there mr let me answer that question the person who is sitting there is an mb mr mb rajesh the same person's party member pk srimadhi has commented that the ladies go to the temple to show their nudity if a party mp named pk srimadhi can comment that there are hindu ladies black, like that who will do PSC those same thing lying black you ask mr mb rajesh whether he is party lying. member this is a distortions they are doing no 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 they are they are no, no, no. you ask mr mb rajesh whether pk srimadhi has commented that the, the, this this is the no, no, i can show you the video right now i can show you the video the which srimadhi has played i can i can play it right now i show, show the video show the entire speech yeah. please show I the entire speech as even the mp has made a I statement want to clarify something about what uh, no, mr kalash no, was this have have said you are deliberately spreading these lies that mr you are kalash deliberately has. spreading these lies okay now here's my question has no, the protest that is, that become that is the point that i want to leave for you mp can comment like if i okay one second one second padma pillai Do you believe that the protest okay. has now If been taken? One, like one, that, second, one second, one second. No, no. I'm, I'm moving the question to Padma Pillai. Padma Pillai, do you believe that the protest now has been taken away from the hands of the true devotees and has been moved into political parties, where political parties are using this to gain ground? Of course. The protests of are course. now twofold. The 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 original protest, which was started by the devotees, are still continuing. Mm. They have not stopped. Every town and city and uh, village of this of that state are seeing spontaneous. But the other political parties have jumped in after seeing the kind of sentiment that has come out in the people. And that is politics. That is politics for you. How can you criticize political parties for uh, you know following what the people are doing? But that said as that set aside, I would like to clarify to Mr. Uh, Kailash Vasudev. Uh, about the piravam uh, uh, the church case it's a clear case of casteism where one caste one types of christian were not allowed to worship in one type of church and the court overruled and that was also a fundamental factor uh, a fundamental right that was being uh, uh, was being upheld where the, uh, the element of casteism in that church was being removed but this government then said that no we want 3 months because it will hurt the, uh, the the feelings of the devotees so what we are asking as lay people we do not have so much knowledge about law and how the supreme court judgment comes into effect you know the next second as it is produced when we see that our government when it comes to a core issue that was addressed in that church raised by the devotees of casteism when the government says that it can take time to implement for not hurting uh, the devotee sentiment what about the sentiments of 5 crore ayappa devotees in five states 
does it have no value for it so why should we not accuse the uh, the kerala government of playing politics it is their politics the marxist politics say that they do not believe in god or Let whatever it is and they Let find it clarify. fine to okay. implement certain kind of rules on certain kind of denominations well so I, why should we not uh, uh, make it uh, make political statements why mr m v rajesh is saying that it is all political Obviously, okay. Uh, okay, every second, uh, individual. Like, in I, I'm actually going to give the last word to Mr. Kailash Vasudev. It's not Mr. Kailash Vasudev. He is a politician. So we are asking the government why they okay. are bringing in their politics into this issue okay. when they can make right. accommodations yeah, one, for the one, one second, one second. My last question is to Mr. Kailash Vasudev. Mr. Kailash Vasudev, the question of politics having entered this entire, uh, you know, debate, the question of the fact that it was initially, it, it is the court's judgment. Now we have the court's judgment against religion and belief. And we have a third element now of politics that has entered. Do you believe politics has corrupted the conversation? Uh, politics has become a center of trouble. We are now using this platform of the judgment of the Supreme Court for political benefaction. Mm. Whether it is political party AB, particle party CD, particle political party EF, they all want to use this because please understand, you are not very far from a general election. Yes. This particular group, group of devotees, which feels that they have been, I mean, they have been slighted by the Supreme Court, I have a number of five crores plus. So, which political party wouldn't like to get those voters on the right side? The elections are not very far. Now, if that is the situation, you are using a very wrong trump card to defeat a judgment which is based on constitutional pr uh, principles. The Supreme Court has interfered not only in this case, in myriad cases, saying that, look, you've got to break this old psyche. You've got to bring equality in the whole system. You've got to bring about a certain amount of balance in giving women their rights. Look at the Hindu law systems and transitions. Before the amendments to the Hindu Succession Act, you had a whole set of laws which are totally difficult to understand. Supreme Court stepped in. Whether it is the Muslim law, 1984, you had the, uh, 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 the, the maintenance for ladies. Now you have the triple talaq situation. So you see, it's the Supreme Court is not going to look at a political party. It's going to look at the nation per se. And in its interpretation of the constitution, it is going to make sure everybody gets equal rights. To use, a to use this as a political platform is, to my mind, a very wrong action because political parties will always play their games for, the, for purposes of gaining benefits which have not accrued to them. Here we are using the Supreme mm -hmm. Court's judgment as a platform for wrong purposes. Let the Supreme Court judgment be implemented. No one asked the Supreme Court to stay the judgment, did they? Yeah. The review petitioners, have they asked for a stay? Did they mention it that this judgment be stayed? No, they have not chosen to do so. So why should the judgment not be implemented? Go to the court, take a stay. Who's stopping you? Say, I've got a review pending, so therefore don't implement this judgment. Government of Kerala says we accept the judgment. So we are implementing it. So this is the political platform which is coming up. You do nothing, you blame somebody else. You hold it against the court, you hold it against the government. Please don't do so. Leave the Supreme Court in its functions. It has done what it had to. Don't point fingers at that court. The court is doing the, doing the nation a huge service. I respect that institution. Please join me in respecting it. Don't do this. Well, on now we join Mr. Kailash Vasudev in respecting the Supreme Court. And you go to the up, Supreme yes. Court for all relief. Yes. While we wrap up this conversation, I'm going to leave it at what Mr. Vasudev said, which is very simply this. If you don't want the Supreme Court judgment to be implemented, you are free to approach the court asking for a stay on that judgment and to review. That is what these protesters should be doing. Nobody has asked for a stay up till now. It is not the choice of the Kerala government on whether or not to implement the Supreme Court judgment. The judgment is, is in effect as soon as it is pronounced. At that moment, it is implemented. What the Kerala government has to do is to provide police protection and maintain law and order, which is their job. Which is what they're going to have to do tomorrow. It is unfair to ask any government not to provide police protection and not to maintain law and order. What is happening in Kerala right now is unconstitutional and undemocratic. This is not a peaceful protest. This infringes on the rights of those women, the ones in buses and the ones in cars, to go where they please. Whether or not they're going to the temple, you can't stop them on the street. It is true that we are a secular country and every opinion is valid. Please make those arguments before the Supreme Court. To make these arguments on the street after the judgment has come is not going to serve anybody any good. 
Let's also remember, like Mr. Vasudev said, we're six months away from a general election. Everything is about politics at this point. And that's a clear view we have to keep in mind. If you're curious about the motives of all political parties, just Google right now the religious demographic of the state of Kerala and you will find it very interesting. We're going to be live all day tomorrow here on Mirror Now with Sabri Mala and what is happening outside of this temple as it comes down to a final showdown at Shabri Mala. Thanks for watching.